Hello and welcome to our session on how University of Nebraska Medical Center implemented granular usage reporting to get more insights into their science direct usage. My name is Farah Karimi and I am a tech lead here in the identity space at Elsevier and I will be walking you through the granular usage reporting solution and how we went about approaching the problem at hand. Throughout our discovery process, and in speaking with libraries, we learned that there is a desire to better understand cost per use data so that decision making can be more evidence based. And this is especially helpful when budgets are limited to enable better allocation. We also learned that there is great value in understanding behavioral analytics for service development and that Understanding user journeys allows for the optimization of discovery on campus and can help maximize return on investment. There is the need for clarity when differentiating between resource types of remote versus on campus usage, and also a lack of transparency in how usage is calculated can be a cause for misleading conclusions and possible misinterpretations. And lastly, there are several tools in use for such reporting uh, um, uh, purposes, which can create a lack of consistency and sometimes be quite confusing. And all these learnings drove the thinking behind uh, the granular usage reporting solution. So what is granular usage reporting? The solution addresses this long-standing and increasing library need by providing an additional column to the standard counter-level reports. The column can indicate org units, campus location, demographics, or any other classification as defined by the university and where the users came from. This technology is now available to all academic institutions with a Science Direct subscription, and we are looking into extending it to other products across the Elsevier portfolio. So what additional insights can you expect? As you're very well familiar with the counter report format, you can see the um, monthly stats by title. The granular usage feature adds an extra column to this view. So the sample above shows the highlighted column featuring the attribute containing the department and staff type within the university. But this attribute can be anything that helps you understand your usage without compromising privacy meaning that it can be tailored based on your university's hierarchy or org structure so that you can add different values to define your user groups more accurately, as well as add more values to this column to get deeper granularity. In order to validate our thinking, we ran a pilot starting earlier this year Working closely with librarians as our development partners, we wanted to test the technical solution based on the findings from our discovery phase. Their insights were critical to shaping the solution and validating our outcomes. And we were able to successfully test the technical workings and that the solution is fit for purpose to the library use cases. The primary driver for this still being the ability to support budgeting decisions by getting more visibility into usage without compromising uh, user privacy. But we were also able to verify the value that this adds for ROI discussions, as well as any other internal discussions and leadership presentations. The information was also seen as useful in identifying areas for targeted internal communication, as well as trending topics. And that viewing the data in this way is prompting librarians to think of ways to optimize the report for different purposes. To give you a little bit more detail into the underlying tech, the way that this attribute works is based on SAML2 technology for federated access. The attribute itself is called EDU person analytics tag and has been published by refeds as a standard way to transmit and consume this information. For the specification, it is not supposed to contain personally identifiable information, and it is set up at your identity provider, such as Azure, Open Athens, or Shibboleth, with the help from your IT department responsible for SSO on campus, or with the help of Open Athens. 
Any updates or changes to the values configured are completely controlled by the university with no dependency on Elsevier. And Elsevier provides the assurance of trust for our privacy policy on federated access. So we've created a privacy statement in consultation with our academic partners for this purpose. So what can you expect after go live? As we're gearing up to conclude the pilot, the launch and launch the solution, our goal is to provide an easy way for our system administrators and our librarians to access these reports without disruption to your usual workflows. And with this in mind, we're looking to add the granular usage functionality as an option on the counter widget on Elsevier's Epic platform. This is a platform for reporting insights used by customers. And as you can see on the mock-up screen to the right, uh, and to give you an idea, this would be something simple as a checkbox. So at any time that you wish to include the attribute in your report, you can easily opt in. Okay, um, thank you, Farah. Um, so my name's uh, Rob Skaysbrook. I'm the Head of Global Sales and Partnerships here at Open Athens. Um, and I'm just gonna talk to you about how Open Athens has been involved in the pilot, uh, facilitated the granular usage attributes um, for University of Nebraska Medical Center. Um, and I'll also talk to you a little bit about the, the technology that, uh, that underpins that. So first, I just wanted to sort of start by uh, giving a kind of brief overview of Open Athens, if you're unfamiliar with, with what Open Athens is. Uh, and I always like to start with the, the why, why do we do what we do? Um, well, Open Athens really is here to remove barriers to knowledge and, and connect people to information. Um, you know, how do we do that? We provide this kind of robust, reliable gateway, really, between subscription-based content uh, and those who need access to it. And what is Open Athens? Open Athens itself is a, an authentication software um, that enables people to access digital content with a single sign on. So, Open Athens itself um, is global. Uh, we're based in the UK, but we have partnerships with organizations across the world, um, organizations such as EBSCO uh, in the States. Uh, and our product infrastructure is distributed globally via the, the Google Cloud Network. There are around 3,000 organizations that, uh, that use Open Athens today, uh, and those are libraries and publishers from across the space. So medical, academic, public libraries, schools, governments, and the corporate sector as well. There are over 3,500 um, library resources, and those are both journals, databases, technology services that are compatible with Open Athens for single sign-on. Uh, and we regularly have 5 million end users uh, on a monthly basis that are authenticating to library resources using the Open Athens platform. So, how do we support the granular usage attributes? Well, authentication technology um, is, is used by libraries to, um, to, to easily secure um, information and also to, um, to, to release the attribute. Um, you know, the first step for, for Open Athens um, is to, to connect Open Athens with your existing institutional identity management. Um, and that could be something like Azure, could be Okta, could be Ping Identity, whatever service your institution is using uh, for your, your sort of in-house authentication. That's step one. When we have Open Athens connected to that service, um, the second step is about using the Open Athens administration module to, to configure user level attributes. And as Farah said earlier, there's no need for personally identifiable information. Um, these could be pseudonymous identifiers. Uh, they don't need to, to identify an individual, uh, but you need to, to set that up within the Open Athens administration module. And the third step um, is setting up uh, an attribute release policy with Open Athens to securely send the information via the SAML protocol, which I'll talk, uh, touch on a little bit later. Um, during that authentication process as the individual logs into uh, to a publisher's content. Now that's, that sounds fairly complex and complicated, but I just wanted to show you how easy that is. 
um, with a screen recording of actually how you would set that up in Open Athens. Um, so as we go into the connections area of Open Athens, uh, I have a connection to my uh, Google directory, and I'm moving into the attributes area. I need to create a mapping rule. So I'll give it a name. This one's called Edu Person Analytics tag. I map it to an attribute or a piece of information that is within my Google directory or my local directory. I give it a display name so that uh, within the Open App, Open Athens admin module, it makes sense to me. Uh, and I save that. I've now consumed that information within Open Athens. I move to the preferences area. I go to the attribute release piece. Uh, and then I search for Elsevier because I just want to release this to Elsevier in this instance, not all the vendors that I work with. So if I find Elsevier, you can see that within the Elsevier area here, the analytics tags available for me to select, select that, click done, save that change. And now the analytics tag is mapped in from my institutional directory to Open Athens. And every time an individual authenticates via Open Athens to Elsevier, we're releasing that analytics tag. So that, that was quite uh, quite fast. That was a one minute uh, demonstration of how to set that up. I, I, I um, you know recognised that was quite a sort of whistle stop tour of it. Um, what we've been doing over the the past few months is sort of developing some contextual help guides uh, to this, and I'll give you some links to to those afterwards if you want to set that up. But I just wanted to demonstrate really how easy it is, and and that Open Athens admin module has been designed for for librarians to use. So moving on to the, the technology that, um, that we use currently. So Open Athens is based on the, the SAML protocol, Security Assertion Markup Language. Um, SAML is the industry standard for web authentication. So it's what Microsoft and Google use. It's also the same technology used by, by Shibboleth and national federations, such as in common. Um, and, and just comparing SAML to, to the sort of older IP-based approach, um, the biggest difference really is that it's all about the, the individual, about the end user. So with the, the old approach via IP, um, it's fairly easy to spoof an IP address and make it look like you're coming from an authorized location, you know, in order to gain access to paywall content that you shouldn't have access to. Um, you know, with SAML, it's much, um, uh, and especially if institutions have two-factor authentication, um, that becomes almost impossible. You know, you need to know someone's username, password, have their mobile phone in order to approve the second factor. Um, so it's much, much, much more secure in that sense. It's about the individual logging in and authenticating as, as themselves. Um, what Open Athens does, though, is it kind of gives you, the librarian, complete control. So, so our system, as I said earlier, works without any personally identifiable information. So you, you, know, you can keep everything anonymous if you choose. Uh, and with those kind of policy controls, you can ensure that, that only those vendors you trust get additional attributes, like the analytics tag. You don't have to send everything to, to everybody. Um, and so, yeah, you know, how, how can we help? Um, you know, as I said, we, we are building some help guides um, that are sort of contextual. They're built into the Open Athens admin module. If you click the sort of question mark icon, you can see those um, and they'll help you through that sort of process of setting up attribute release. Um, you can raise a support ticket. Um, so if you if you purchase Open Athens from, um, from us directly, then you can raise a support ticket with us. If you purchase it through EBSCO or one of our other partners, you can raise a support ticket with them and they'll be happy to help you through setting up that kind of attribute release process. Um, support at openathens.net or contact at openathens.net if you're new to Open Athens and you want to sort of talk to us about how it might work at your institution, feel free to get in touch with us. Um, and there's my email address as well if you want to have a conversation with me directly about this. And I'll pass over to Alison now. Thanks, Rob. Um, my name is Allison Bobel, and I'm the head of collection development and metadata at the University of Nebraska Medical Center. In addition to my collection development and acquisition responsibilities, I also uh, manage our library's authentication setup. I'm going to start out by providing a little bit of our authentication history um, since it relates to our path um, towards granular usage reporting. So, for many years, our library used Easy Proxy, which was locally hosted, and it worked for the most part. Um, we could handle the, the setup in the library. We did have a little bit of occasional IT support, um, but it worked it pre pretty well for quite, quite a few years. Uh, 
several years ago, um, our IT department merged with our clinical partners IT group. Um, our clinical partner shares many facilities uh, with the university. We're also co-located on the same campus, um, but we are separate institutions. But when our IT groups merged, it meant that we were now gonna all have one, the same IP range. Um, therefore, we no longer could use or could rely on campus IP authentication um, to limit our access to just the licensed users. Our clinical partner is, um, their employees are not um, part of our institution, we're actually separate institutions. So in order to handle this uh, new shared IP range, we switched our easy proxy setup to require all of our users to authenticate even when they were on campus. Um, this was rather disastrous. Um, our users were used to, when they were in their office in their lab, accessing the licensed content um, easily without any uh, barriers. Uh, but with this new change, they now had to go through the library um, website every time to access the subscribe content, which is how, because of the change in, uh, that are set up for Easy Proxy. Um, and they were not happy with this. So we knew we had to, we knew we needed another solution. We had to make a change. And we really felt like federated access was how we needed to move towards. Um, we did consider using Shibboleth, um, but we wanted a system that really the library would manage um, and we need it wouldn't need much, if any, IT support. So we ultimately selected Open Athens. Uh, it allowed us to move to that federated access, but it also allowed us to still um, authenticate to resources that don't support federated access. We, we do have a couple subscriptions to journals from very small societies that um, don't have support for federated access. So we can use a proxy setup for those um, couple resources. Open Athens, Open Athens also allowed us to keep that management of the, the system within the library. Um, and the reporting feature that we saw that would be available to us was really exciting. We, we looked at it as an opportunity to get a more detailed view of how our resources are being used. So when we set up our Open Athens, we did require our users to authenticate even if they were on campus. Um, that means we had no more on-campus IP. Um, this provided that assurance uh, that only our licensed users were accessing our materials. Um, it's more secure. Um, and it also benefited the reports that we could generate out of Open Athens, which I'll explain in a minute. So even with this move towards federated access and sort of the seamless um, user experience, there was a little bit of concern within the library um, about requiring people to log in even when they're on campus. And most of that concern came from the bad experience we had when we switched our easy proxy setup. Um, but we had a couple things going for us. One, uh, neither of which is actually a, a pleasant thing, but it worked in our, our favor. One was we set up Open Athens somewhat early in the pandemic. So a lot of our users were still working remotely. So they have to log into everything all the time anyway. The other thing is our IT or our clinical partner was hit with a cyber attack. Um, and because we share an IT, that meant the university was also affected. So not surprisingly, there was more, um, more scrutiny, more layers associated with IT after the cyber attack. Things like the VPN was no longer available um, for most people. Um, so logging into library resources was sort of the least of anyone's concern. They were logging to lots of new things anyway. So after we went live with Open Athens and we were live for a while and kind of got used to it and our users got used to it, we turned our attention to customizing the reporting feature. We wanted to use attributes um, that are connected to our Active Directory user accounts to expand the reporting um, options that we could have. This was, again, as I mentioned earlier, this is one of the benefits we, we liked about Open Athens. So we worked with our IT group to see which attributes we had available to us. Uh, our main concern was privacy, right? We, did, we didn't want any personally identifying information um, to be passed through. And we ended up selecting two attributes. Um, one is user group, and that's just student, non-student, student and everyone else, faculty, staff. Um, and the other is college, unit, um, institute. Our attributes in, in our active directory are a little messy, um, and not every attribute was actually available in everyone's profile. 
But the ones we did select, we made sure were private, uh, didn't have any private information passed through. Uh, they provided the kind of information we wanted um, and they were part of everybody's user profile. And again, because we require people to log in regardless of their location, we knew that every time someone logged in, those attributes would be passed through. So what kind of reports can we generate out of Open Athens? We have had um, our Open Athens set up for uh, the reporting feature since about March, March or April this year. Um, so this is just a sample report of um, our authentications to, in this case, just Elsevier content um, for the last six months or so. Um, it's, and it's, we're using the um, attribute, the College Institute Administrative Unit attribute. Um, in this case, it's not surprising that our College of Medicine has the highest percentage of authentications. They are the largest uh, unit on our uh, campus. Um, I could also take this kind of report and break it down by all of our resources. Again, I limited this one to Elsevier content only, but I could look at all of our resources and then drill down to a particular college, look at the college public health, see what resources are frequently used um, by that particular college. So this is just a, a sample uh, report using one of our attributes. As I mentioned earlier, the other attribute we used is user group. In this case, it's student or non-student, and I just call the non-student group faculty staff. Um, so this particular slide is looking again, just at our Elsevier content um, for the last couple months to see um, the breakdown in authentications by user group. Um, I, we don't have enough data at this point to really make any assumptions or see what kind of patterns might be emerging. Um, in this case, it's just for the summer. It's not surprising student use is a little low. We don't have as many enrolled students during the summer, but I wouldn't say overall, this is indicative of our, our um, student versus non-student usage of our resources. Again, I just wanted to show the kind of um, report we can, we can generate out of Open Athens. One of the limitations of these kind of reports is that for some of our content providers, Elsevier being one of them, we have various types of content. We have journals, we have books, and we have databases. And Open Athens treats them all the same as far as authentic authentication goes. Um, I can't see from here what is a journal um, authentication or a book use or a database search. Um, I can only see that a user logged into an Elsevier resource, um, but not which one. However, when we started with Open Athens, we thought this is more data than we've had before. It's more insight into our usage than we, we've ever had. Um, and we were excited about it. But it's not quite detailed enough, and so we wanted more. Um, so in the spring, we started working with Elsevier to set up some granular usage reporting. Um, at that time, we configured our Open Athens to pass through a, a user attribute um, just to Elsevier. As Rob mentioned, you can limit it just to a particular um, provider. The attribute we set up is similar to the user group attribute we set up in Open Athens, um, but it's, it's slightly different. It is still um, an attribute that does not include any uh, personally identifiable information. And so after uh, a few technical hiccups, which was my technical hiccups, not on the system end, um, we started getting our counter usage reports from Elsevier for our journal and book usage that now include our, our attribute. So here's just a couple months of the data. And this is looking at the unique item requests um, for our Elsevier books based on the attributes. So it's divided by student and faculty, which is non-students. Um, and then a similar report is looking at the unique item request for our journal usage for the past couple of months. And because this, um, this attribute is now in our counter reports, we can see not only the data and metric type, but we can also see the title level information. So I took one of our titles, in this case, the Lancet, and I looked at the usage um, based on that attribute. So why, why would we even want this kind of data? Farah and, and Rob kind of alluded to it earlier. Um, counter reports as they are, are useful, um, but they only tell one part of the story. They may help with things like collections decision, decisions by showing how and, and when a, a particular resource is being used. But if we need to make a cancellation decision, which is a very common thing we do, right? Um, it would be really helpful to target the conversations about possible cancellations with a particular user group um, or a college or an institute. 
the raw usage numbers in our counter reports don't tell the value. Um, they don't, uh, the value of a resource um, to a particular group. So the granular usage reports that we're using that have the non-identified demographic data can help us with that targeted messaging. So if we see a particular journal, for instance, is used by a, an institute, um, and maybe it's one of our smaller institutes, not a lot of, the raw numbers don't show a lot of usage um, compared to maybe another resource that's heavily used by one of our larger colleges, we might assume, well, that's a low usage resource, maybe we should cancel it. But with having the, the granular usage reports, we can see, well, that's frequently used by a particular institute. Maybe we should go talk to them um, and discuss the value of that resource. These kind of granular usage reports also can help with funding conversations. Um, in our case, nearly half of our uh, collections budget comes from student fees. That is, students pay a flat fee per credit hour that comes to the library. And the other part of our budget, um, significant part of our budget comes from state funding, which is in most years at best flat funding, um, but it's always at risk for being um, reduced. By having the granular level usage reports on how our resources are being used, we can use that data perhaps to find other groups on campus that are heavy users of our collection and see about getting funding, funding from them. For instance, um, indirect funds from research grants or if we see that our students are the heaviest users of all of our resources, maybe it makes a case to increase that student fee. It's more productive to have those kind of funding conversations and discussions with our university administration if we have the data to support a case for additional funding. So we need to have um, all of our content providers supply this kind of granular level data. It's gonna help libraries make more informed, data-driven data decisions. 